I'm in Tijuana, Mexico, where those build a wall chants seem pretty silly in the face of this wall that already exists. A wall that is surprisingly multifunctional. Not only is it a barrier from seeing your family, it's also an Instagram hotspot and an imposing backstop for a soccer game. That's America right there. That's America right there, yeah. Another function, keeping deported veterans out of America, like Joe, a Vietnam vet who Homeland Security dumped here four months ago. So they call this place Friendship Park. Yes. Here is where you can talk to people. They have certain hours in which they open up that gate up there. They open up that gate and then people start coming in, they start lining up, just like if you were in jail. Nothing says friendship like uh, military grade steel. <laughs> Not even Vietnam. They, right. they had us on hearts, you know, but at least yeah, between the bamboos, we could see. You're saying Vietnamese prison was nicer than this? Look, can't even put your finger in there, see? Joe was born in Mexico and moved to the U.S. at age 11. He served in the military for six years and is one of hundreds of foreign-born veterans who've been deported from the U.S. despite their service. This is the only way I will ever be able to see my grandchildren, right? But I'm not going to bring them here. You don't want them to I see know, you this way? No, no, of course not. That's, you know, what am I going to say? Where's grandpa? What's he doing in there? While Joe spent his youth dodging bullets in Vietnam, I spent mine dodging adulthood in comedy theaters. <laughs> Avant-garde theater games are American, but being a Marine isn't. So what makes an American an American? There must be a formula, like, I assume, vet plus anything always equals American. Evidently, it's different if it's vet plus immigrant. I feel for Joe and the deported vets, and I can only assume anyone who hears their story will feel sorry for them as well. I don't feel sorry for them whatsoever, and they need to be removed from the country. This is David Ward, a former ICE agent who spends his retirement painting with a broad brush. And they're coming in with diseases such as smallpox and leprosy and TB that are going to affect our people in the United States. That you sympathize? That you empathize? No. It clearly states under 237, that if you commit these certain felonies, you're going to be deported from the United States. And here we have a, a scenario where you're saying that if a permanent resident commits a crime, well, let's just forget what that he committed the crime. Forget about the immigration law. OK, wait. Joe's story is more complicated. They put me in jail, uh, supposedly with assault. So I spent 494 days in jail. There was no trial or nothing. I was a free man. My family was outside waiting for me. And I never got to see them. After fighting to secure the homeland, Joe was deported by Homeland Security. Luckily, he was the ideal age to start over, 73. So evidently, vet plus immigrant plus criminal equals not American. Should we cut them some slack? They're vets. Yeah. How many vets get thrown in jail for uh, committing crimes? Well, they I go to prison. They go to prison. OK. They serve their time. And then shouldn't we welcome them back into society? I suppose you can. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that foreign nationals should be granted the same latitude that U.S. citizens are granted. When you're done with the service, you are an automatically citizen. That's what they told you're me. It. But no, you're I found out the hard way later that it, it wasn't true. Since World War I, non-citizen servicemen are officially granted expedited naturalization during periods of hostilities. Serving is supposed to get you into the express lane to citizenship, but instead of limiting items to 10 or less, you have to survive the Tet Offensive. However, any small paperwork mistake could leave them vulnerable to deportation. Some of these stories, though, are of 18-year-old kids who came back, they thought, they thought they were citizens. So? We are all 18 once, we made mistakes. Well, are we a country of second chances? We got the amendments in the Constitution. We do. We got George Bush. We got Arrested Development. Right? We're all about second chances. It just feels like we should be more empathetic to those people who have made the choice to serve for this country. But tough titties? Uh, if it gets down to the point where you're committing felonies, yeah, tough titties. Cold. To be fair, tough titties is our current immigration policy. But I wonder, if serving in the military doesn't necessarily equal citizenship, maybe there's a cleaner answer. Money. You know, they say U.S. citizenship is priceless. By priceless, they mean you can also invest $500,000 in a ski slope. So, oh. 
Listen up, better quiet down. In Vermont, New Hampshire, and Colorado, foreign investors have basically bought their green cards through something called an EB-5 visa. It's an employment-based visa meant to inject foreign investment, including into areas with high unemployment, in exchange for fast-track citizenship. This is what true citizenship looks like. <laughs> While one of its aims is to pump funds into distressed communities, the money is often funneled into luxury properties, big city high-rises, and white people cap mountains like this one. But it gets better. And by better, I mean significantly worse. In the past, the government has been so eager to push these applicants through that their past transgressions have been overlooked. Little allegations, like drug trafficking or being a spy for Iran. Iran? But if you don't have half a million dollars, you're stuck running down a hill, chasing the silver platter of citizenship. And no matter what you did for your country, it's always just beyond your reach. Also, I really want to eat that big shrimp. <laughs>